Hey guys! Well, this is going to be the first of a series of videos. I guess I'll see how it goes on, but this will be drawing time with Joel. On today's menu, we will be drawing a quaggan in a special pose. Of course, this will be sexy quaggan. So get your tablets ready, paper, um, whichever that you'll be using. Um, I just made a file in Photoshop. You, you can use any resolution really that you want and size. It does, depends what you want to use your picture for and well, how big of a file you want it to be. So I tend to put a higher resolution simply because I like being able to use my pictures for whichever purposes I want without them being all pixelated and icky. But uh, that's just me. So really just get your Photoshop out and grab pen. If you have your tablet, grab pen and paper if you don't. So basically just start off with uh, a little sketch behind. I just I did it quick quick uh, in Photoshop for like five minutes just to get like the general pose. So you could just scribble something down really really fast. And then you just put it on another layer and you put the opacity down. Just, just enough so that you can see it a tiny bit and use it as a guideline. If you are using paper, um, you can also do this by getting one of those special blue um, pencils that you can just do your fast sketch underneath and then uh, go on top with normal pencil because when you scan that the blue will not come out you'll just get the black outline on your computer screen so just sketch down that quickly and then we'll start doing the outline you'll see that I have a tendency of um, just restarting the lines a lot I kind of don't have it's been a long time since I've drawn really so I don't have the best um, lines they sometimes come out icky so I restart them quite a bit and this is a lot of it's gonna be in this video so just basically follow the outline of your initial sketch change it around if you want a bit I did for the arm and a bit of the leg and you can change it just as you, as you want. You can fix stuff on the way, which is the beauty of Photoshop. If you're using Photoshop, it's quite fun for that. Pencil, get a good eraser. Definitely get a good eraser. And do not press too hard on your pencil. It'll make it much easier. Do like fast, quick sketch lines, and then when we're done the outlining, just pass over it with a harder, harder uh, line. It'll make the outline come out better and you'll have a better outline in general because you would have time to sketch it out properly while school. So that's pretty much it. I do like, if you look on the side, you'll see that I have more than one layer. I do like making my outline on more than one layer. Just like for the nails, you can see I can just make them on top and then go back on the other layer and just erase what's under it so that way I don't have to redo lines or uh, if I mess something up, it's easily erased and deleted, so I do just like making layers. No specifics, like you have to put this in this layer, this in this layer, no, it's, I just kind of go, go with the flow. I make new layers. Sometimes I have too many layers, don't make too many because you might get lost. I have a tendency of not naming my layers, so you can go ahead and name yours if you want to be much more organized than I am would be a good idea because I think at one point in this video I'm like, wait, which layer is? Huh? Kind of lost. We're gonna give Quaggan a little smile. Uh huh. Because he's cute. Oh yeah. If you see a lot of times um, on the screen that I go like back to a race and I don't click a button for it, it's really because my when we're on your tablet, um, the other side of your pen normally is an eraser. I don't know if it's the case for all tablets, but in mine it is. If you just turn it around, it's an eraser, so I use that quite a bit. Else than that, I think I mostly click on things in this video so that you can see how to do it. So, Except for when I move around. Oh yeah. Um, spacebar, if those that are new to Photoshop and such, if you hold spacebar and you click around, you can simply move around in your screen. And then if you use Alt with the uh, wheel on your mouse, you can scroll to zoom in and out, which is basically what I use the whole time because I really don't feel like clicking on that magnifying glass every single time that uh, I need to zoom and move around. It's much, much, much more practical that way.
So I'm gonna give Quaggan a little spot. So you don't actually have to outline his spots. I have a tendency of outlining everything, so you, you can. But else not, they'll, they'll just be darker colors in the end anyway, so you don't really need to outline them. So for now, for color, what I did is I took all those magnificent layers that I made for the outline and put them in a little folder. If you see on the bottom where you can make new layers, um, there's a little folder button. You can create, click on that. It'll make a folder. You can name it. I named it outline. And then I just selected every single layer for the outline and I dragged that in there. So after that, you have to make a new layer and place that under your outline folder. That way the outline will always be on the top. And like I just mentioned, um, sometimes I'm really bad with colors. <laughs> so I find it always easier. And even my teachers say it's your best off using from references. So you don't have to like color it like a normal quaggan. You can make any quaggan color you want. It's just that it's always easier for colors and color palettes. I find if you take, if you base yourself off an existing image. So I just googled a quaggan hatchling and took the pretty colors on the one that I liked. So we'll be just be using that for today. You can feel free to use another color. You can make a pink quaggan if you want to. I just prefer blue. Mwahaha. Blue is pretty. So just color in. I have a tendency also of not filling in my lines, my black outlines completely, so I can't exactly just click fill with the uh, paint button, so I just color it in manually. If you did all your lines completely full, that there's no holes in them, that they all connect, then feel free to just to like, you can fill the whole space by using the uh, paint bucket option. Still don't like it too much because sometimes it does make weird things, especially like in tips and like you'd see in the tips of the nail, sometimes it would have a hard time filling it and you'd have to go fill it in manually anyway, so I just have a tendency of doing that by hand. Just to make sure everything is in the right place. And I made a new layer for this color. Every single color that I do normally has a different layer for colors just in case uh, I decide down the road eh, that's not the color that I want it'll be easier for you to change if you want to do if you have it in a different layer and if you don't like it at all well you can just delete it after that without modifying anything else so let's fill that stomach in and see so yeah, I didn't like the color on his stomach so just selected if you see that I select like the whole layer that I'm on if you go in your layers on the side and you click I do believe it is control and you click at the same time in the little empty like checkered box that you see next to where it says like layer 25 I think you click that and it will automatically select the area that you have painted in in Photoshop so it'll select like the whole stomach and that way you won't be able to go outside of that selected area and paint. Some. It's really handy sometimes if you want to do, um, but we'll end up using it later for shading. It's going to be really, really helpful because then you don't have to redo all the lines if you go outside of them. It's already done. So like I said, you don't have to put outlines on the spots. See, we were just filling them in with dark. So I know some people don't like outlining. That's fine. You can always just use your outline as a base and then get rid of it after. If you do that, make sure that your coloring is um, clean. Because right now, if I take off all those layers, like all since the black is hiding it, not all the, all the traced lines for the color would be clean and smooth. They'd look kind of bumpy and not pretty. So... If you are going to do that with outline, out, outlines, do just watch out and make sure that you look what it looks like without the outlines while you're coloring. Fill in the spots. Depending on how many spots you want on your pocket, this can be a longer process. <laughs> Quite 
quite a few spots on this quad. Feel free to make your spots in any shape you want. I almost felt like making a heart, but then I went, nah. This is a blue quaggin. Manly blue quaggin. Though I think he has a sharp heart shaped one, I think, but a tiny bit, at least on his head, by accident. On purpose. Now, just fill in that mouth. And you see. So I just selected the whole blue that I had done first. And now we're going to start doing a tiny bit of shading. So just take a darker, you could color pick from the blue that you put and just simply take a darker color. Or you can pick also from the image, which what I did. And just make a new layer on top of the original blue and just put some shading in. This is where I'm saying that it's coming really in handy being able to select the area that you previously painted in because otherwise it, I'd have to be careful of where like I painted on the bottom to make sure it didn't go outside the outline. In this case, I don't. So now as you can see, it's still like the dark blue that I'm doing goes over the spots with the kind of same blue. You can change the function of the layer like I did right now. As you click on the layer on the top, you're going to have a drop down menu. And I just personally scroll down in, in that menu and see which one looks best. In this case, I thought Multiply looked pretty good, so that's what we chose. You could keep, keep the same color. I mean, I'm still drawing in a dark blue, but since um, I changed the effect on the layer and now it's a Multiply layer, even though I'm drawing on blue, it doesn't look blue. Like right now, we're calling on the stomach and it comes out as a dark beige. So that's the advantage of the Multiply there. It really will just darken any any color that you're drawing on. I think I use this type of uh, layer quite a bit of time. So we'll add a bit more shading on Sir Quaggin. That belly. See again, selecting the layer that we previously drawn on much easier to make that little shading on there. There are many different ways to shade stuff. This is just like hard lines. So, And after what I like doing as well is you make a new layer on top of all that shading that you did. And if you right click on the bucket tool, it'll become like a gradient tool. Put it to um, color and then opaque. Um, transparency and so it just goes from one color to absolutely transparent and I just take a dark blue color and just put it on the bottom and then I take a light color and I put it on the top just to make sure like that your whole blue is not a unified color just to have a little bit of a, a gradient in there I find it looks nice and um, we're gonna be doing the same thing with the stomach as well so and once again I since after that, bleh, sorry, um, add a bit of lighting. We did the shading before, same concept with the lighting, and I put the layer of lighting in soft light. That way it'll do like the multiply and it'll, you can color the same color and it will still lighten the areas that you want. So, quaggins are shiny, they love to go in water, they have little shiny spots on their head. So, added a little bit of those, fix a few things up, add a bit more spots. Feel free to add as many spots as you want. Quaggins look pretty when they're shiny. Even in the darker areas, feel free to add a little bit of spots. Nothing is ever purely dark. There's always a bit of light that gets in there somewhere. You can also use lighter colors. Or completely different, depending if you want to add lighting or not. I mean, those spots could be pink if the light was pink. And little spots on the nails, because nails are reflective too. Little Quaggin needs a shiny manicure. And to give him some teeth. Little Quaggin teeth. So, I do believe that is pretty much it for the coloring of the Quaggin. What we could do, since he kind of looks like he's floating right now, 
it's probably not the best way to do it but I just take again that kind of like gradient tool and I put it in a sphere in, in a circle shape and then I just squish it and put it under the quagga to make it look like he has a uh, shadow under him and then just add a bit more because he is a bit longer good simple circle and after that there you go you have one sexy little quagga He's winking at you. He loves you. Quaggan likes you. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope that your Quaggans will turn out pretty good. Um, if you'd like to send me your pictures, that would be amazing. I'm pretty sure that I'll be picking a winner of the sexiest Quaggan and prize to be determined probably maybe around two gold or something or maybe an exotic. We'll see. It'll be a surprise. So just send me your pictures as a PM on the forums if possible. Yeah, that sounds good. PM on the forums. So just look for Jolena and send that to me. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you oh, if you did do this on paper, scan it and both are accepted. Photoshop and scanning on paper. So see you guys in game.